Welcome everyone to the latest edition of Talking Data. I'm your host, Kristen Radish of Arbor Research and Trading, joined today by our presenter, Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. Welcome, Jim. Today, Jim, sure. Today, Jim covers the market's response to transitory retiring. Jim, it was a wild week in the yield curve. The yield curve had a huge move last week, flattening 26 basis points over four days. Why four days? Uh, to answer the first question, as we look at the yield curve chart, because that is the four days after Jay Powell retired the phrase transitory, said it was time to retire the phrase. That was one week ago today, as we uh, record, it was last Tuesday. And in the four days after that, the yield curve narrowed or flattened by 26 basis points. And if you jump to the next chart, what you'll see is that a 26 basis point move over four days is the biggest such yield curve flattening in over 10 years. You got to go back to November of 2011 uh, when you saw a much bigger move in the yield curve. So it's been quite the extraordinary week in terms of the way that the market has moved. And I might add too, that if you look at the way that the yield curve flattened, if you go to the next chart, it's been unusual, maybe even unprecedented. Now, normally we use phrases like bull steepener and bear steepener, and what that means is that, or flattener, excuse, since we're talking about flattening. So a bear flattener would mean that both the long end and short end rates are going up, but the speed at which they're going up causes the yield curve to flatten, or a bull flattener, would be both, both long and short rates are going down, but the speed at which they're going down causes the yield curve to flatten. This time it's been the opposite. You've had short rates going straight up uh, as this chart shows, and you've had long rates going straight down. And so if you go to the next chart or the table, uh, the table uh, will show you that uh, the, uh, the last time that we had the yield curve go up 10 basis points in the two year and down 16 basis points in the 10 year was November of 9, 2008 and then 1982. So what we saw last week was only the second time we've seen that in 40 years. The other time we saw that 40 years ago we, was the day that the Fed announced QE. Now, what's similar to this and back then is when they announced QE on November 25th, 2008, it was called the Mortgage Purchase Program. It wasn't called QE. We weren't quite sure what it meant, but we had an idea that it was a big deal. The yield curve freaked out. And then subsequently over the next several months, it became known as QE. And it became known as one of the most important things that the Fed has done in its history. I think this might be similar. What we saw with the Fed retiring transitory I think might mean a major policy shift. Gone is the focus on unemployment or employment. Now the focus is on pushing or paying attention to inflation. In other words, we have now transitioned from the deflationary mindset that we have been in in the last 23 years to an inflationary mindset. And you usually never get an, a bell ringing event to tell you it's happened. And maybe we don't have that now, but we're pretty close to that with Jay Powell announcing time to retire transitory. Because again, let me emphasize, what does that mean? It means you're going to raise rates if inflation stays high. You're not going to, you're not going to explain it away, inflation high, hike, inflation high, hike. You're not going to explain it away anymore. And what Fed policy is the market pricing in? So if we look at the Fed policy chart, our table, excuse me, We've got three rate hikes priced in, one for May, one for July, uh, one for July, and one for December. So we've got three rate hikes priced in. Further, if, and that's all the green area in the table that you see. Further, if you look at the March, con, March, uh, we have a 39% chance that the Fed might hike rates in March. Now, it's not 50, but it's getting into the conversation because it's getting up close to 50. March is important because what is expected at next week's FOMC meeting is the Fed will double the taper to $30 billion a month. That's the expectation. Any deviation from that will be a surprise. That means the Fed will be done with the taper in March. That opens the door for a March rate hike. Also, if you look at the other end of the curve, 
the February 2023 meeting has a 42% chance of a fourth rate hike, not 50%, but again, getting into the conversation that we could be at one, one and a quarter in early 2023. Now, if you go to the chart, the next, or the next ch chart, most economists, in fact, oh, that's not right. That's not right. The Fed's not going to raise three or four maybe times next year. Well, what this shows is that the, a summer rate hike was first priced in in October. And back in October, when it was priced in, the consensus was, well, that's not right. Fed's not going to raise rates this summer. Maybe we'll get one at the end of the year in 2022. That was the consensus. And at the time, I joked, they're in the first stages of the five stages of grief. They're in the denial stage. Well, now you jump ahead two more months to the middle of November or middle of December, excuse me. They're pretty much there right now in terms of a summer rate hike. So no, the consensus does not believe the Fed's going to hike three or four times because they don't comprehend what transitory meant. Like in 08, they weren't sure what the mortgage purchase program meant, meant QE for the next 13 years is what it meant. And I think it's going to take them some time to go from the denial stage to the acceptance stage that the Fed is going to be a lot more aggressive. And the giant flattening of the yield curve is your tell. Short rates are going up because the Fed's going to get aggressive. Long rates are going down because they're going to fight inflation and they might kill the economy. So what does it mean? I think what it means is that there is a major policy shift underway. I understand this is 2021. I understand that 51% of all analysis is, hey, the s and up 100 points today, so everything's good. 49% is everything else you could do in the world. Because uh, we're all so driven by the stock market as being the ultimate arbiter of everything. Uh, we all are Patriot fans because they won last night and the stock market's up. That's just kind of the way that we view the world right now. But if you get away from that, I do think that there's been a policy shift. The Fed is going to deal with inflation. And when they see it, they are going to be aggressive about it. We're not there yet, but we will be. I've been arguing all year, inflation is going to be persistent. Transitory is going to go away. Well, Jay's already retired it. And the supply chain problem, have more on this later in the week, is not only not getting better, it might be the worst it's ever been. And we're going to see more supply chain problems as we move forward from here, more inflation as well. And the response is not gonna be stand on your head and explain it away. The response is gonna be hike rates and hike rates. That I believe will be the story of 2022. Any final thoughts for the day? Uh, the volatility that you've seen in the market is is not unusual when you're going through some kind of a regime shift. It isn't that the market regime shifts and then it just starts orderly going down. It plunges, it soars, it plunges, it soars. We saw this, if you will, the last time was January, February of 2020. In January, we had a scare that there was this virus coming out of China. Market plunged 4% like it did now. Then we all concluded it's just the flu, no big deal market rebounded back to the old highs. See, I told you that virus thingy out of China is not a big deal. And then March came and it became a very big deal. Now, I'm not calling for collapse in the market and I'm not calling for a 35% decline in a month like we saw in March of last year. But what I am saying is, how would you expect the market to behave if we were undergoing a regime change shift? It would plunge, it would soar, there's no regime shift. It would plunge, yes there is, it would soar, no there isn't. And this process will take some time for it to work out before it resolves itself to the fact that the Fed is gonna get a lot more aggressive in raising rates, because I ultimately don't think that will be good for risk assets. Well, Jim, thanks for your thoughts today and thank you everyone for joining us. As a reminder, Arbor Research and Trading is an institutional research and brokerage firm. Our two most prominent offerings are Bianco Research and Arbor Data Science. For any questions, please contact Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Have a great day.